determinants and matrices exercise number one let's go n equal n not equal to 3k and okay these are cube roots of unity let delta equal to this thing this has the value of what this is one then you got omega power 2n omega power n then omega power n oh it's the same thing it's just rotating right oh okay then just add all of these up right and then uh, make that come outside. We just get omega power n plus omega power two n plus one. Oh, that happens to be zero, of course. So yeah, this thing is just equal to zero uh, because omega right. So n is not equal to c k. So you can use the GP formula and say one plus omega power n plus omega power two n. That's equal to omega power um, three n minus one upon omega power n minus one, which is zero because omega power three n is just one and omega power n is not one. So that's zero. One row is gone. I mean, just zero, right? Zero vector. So the dot, uh, yeah, this thing is gone. So zero, right? First A. Second question. Uh, this thing is equal to, you got one, 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 and you got plus X plus Y plus Z, whatever. Uh, whatever. So first of all, just do this, this, and that. Okay, maybe we should uh, be doing it in a different way or something. You could just add all these up, right? Uh, yeah, maybe not. Okay, you know what? Let's just do it the simplest way. Just, just, yeah, just cross method. Okay, of course. So I'm going to use a Saris method. I think it's called that, right? Or the American method or whatever. So I'm just going to repeat, uh, repeat some columns. Or maybe we don't even need to do that. It's just first diagonal. It's just 1 plus x, 1 plus y, 1 plus z, which happens to be how much. Or you could do the repeated vector stuff. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, I think that might be a good thing. So you know that if you have x vector plus a vector, you have x vector plus b vector and then you have x vector plus c vector and that is in a determinant stuff okay so then yeah this thing can be written as uh this thing so you've got a vector b vector c vector this determinant plus uh x vector b vector. you get the thing i think i've done that once right i've uh yeah a vector x vector c vector and then plus uh so all of these are just determinants these are box product right a vector b vector x vector cool so in this case, what is going to be? First of all, our a vector will just be x zero. Sorry, uh, yeah, like x zero zero. Uh, b vector will just be zero y zero, and then c vector which will be uh, zero zero z. So then this box is just x y z. So you got x y z. Oops. And of course, our x vector is just one one one. So you got one one one, then zero y zero zero z one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So right. Uh, got this thing. One one one. You got zero y zero 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 z. Uh, notice that uh, over here you got two zeros, which means that you don't. Yeah, so just do this, this, and that, right? So one times of this minor, then minus zero times uh, this minor, and then plus zero times that minor. Well, these are zeros, so it doesn't matter in the end. It's just one times of that. So might as well just remove these guys. So we'll be doing it. Yeah, we'll be doing it every time. So just y z. So you got plus y z, of course. And then similarly for this thing, just have one, one, one over there. That's uh, of course. So the Y thing is not there, right? Yeah, of course. So you can just take the middle one and the middle one happens to have. Yeah, it's also just positive. Cool. Uh, right. It is just positive as well because like I and J are the same thing. So that addition is even. So yeah, you yeah, can even I plus J that's equal to uh, just one. So that's positive as well. So you can just cut down these guys. So like this thing will just happen to be um, x z, and then this thing will be just x y. Of course, that's it. That's the whole thing. Wow, that was awesome. So what do you get? You just get this as the value of this determinant, which is x plus okay x y z common, and just one plus one upon x plus one upon y plus one. That's it. Of course, so a is correct. Next question. Or you could just turn this by usual multiplication and stuff. Right. Third. The value of this determinant is equal to zero where m is. So what do you got? You got eleven. Okay, ten c four, eleven c six, and then all that stuff. Okay, so all of this is ten c, ten c, then this eleven c over there. Well, that is unexpected. Eleven c six, huh? Wait a second. Oh, I, I, just, I think I know what's going on. Okay, this is uh, written as ten c six, and this thing I'm written as twelve c four. Not a nice thing. No, nope, it's not uh okay so this is like increasing by two every time right you can't just oh this is weird it definitely is weird okay then what can m be equal to 
Oh, oh, okay. See this thing. You got 10C4 and 10C5 if you add these two up. So 10C4 plus 10C5, this is 11C5, right? So if M was 5, you are done because over here as well, you got uh, 6 and 7. So like 11, yeah, okay. 12C7 should be the thing which is there. Okay, got it. So C, right? So single correct, it should be this thing. Next question. Uh, right, because of some of these two vectors will just be this third vector. And you know the thing, right? It really is just the box product or the scalar triple product, right? For our column vectors. Okay. A1, A2 till what is this? A n are in GP, then the value of this determinant is equal to. Right, these are just in GPs. Okay, A n plus one, A n plus two. Then you got A n plus three, A n plus six over there. This is increasing by three and three. Right, I think I know where this is going. Okay. So, uh, yeah, just subtract the first row from everything or the first column, right? Maybe the first column is better because you get this thing, you will get natural log of a n, natural log of a n plus three, natural log of a n plus six, and then subtract that, you'll just get this thing, um, natural log of r, because that's one more than that, and natural log of r, then natural log of r, and over here, you'll just get two natural log of r, so you can already see what's gonna happen, and then the same stuff. So, yeah, the difference is equal to zero, no big deal. D, next question. Yes, yes, that is the thing, just one more every time. Yes. So this has to be zero. Next question. Fifth is the value of this thing. One, then you got to put x plus one, negative x power two, uh, whatever. So what is the value of this thing, huh? Okay. Um, we're gonna have what? You're gonna have four and stuff over there. Oh, I see, I see what's happening. So, uh, yeah, you can write it like, I know, I know this is gonna be zero. I know it will be zero because the thing is this will just be four power x plus four power negative x plus two and guess what you you will have that two 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 vec uh yeah so the row vector two comma two comma two that's just multiple of one 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 so might as well delete that so you just got one 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 then you got four power x plus four power negative x and over here as well you'll get a negative two you can get rid of that stuff so you just get four power x plus four power negative x once again and guess what the second and third row are the same now which means yeah this is just zero so a is correct so without even doing any cheat calculation you just get Zero. Sixth question. Sixth question. X, Y, Z are integers in AP lying between one and nine. And what are these things? Three digit numbers. Okay, so these are right. So X, Y, Z are actually digits, right? So fine. Then the value of this thing is you got X, Y, then you got okay. Very interesting. Oh, first of all, you can write it like hundred X plus hundred Y plus yes, hundred X over there and plus fifty one. Then hundred Y plus forty one hundred Z plus 31 then subtract 100 times of this row right you know the thing so that cancel just get this thing 5 4 3 51 41 31 and oh guess what you can actually do yeah subtract 50 40 30 that row vector from the second row and then what you get is get 5 4 3 1 1 1 and x y z which you can use to write like this thing 4 or you know what subtract actually 3 from that just get this thing 2 uh 1 0 and then you just got 1 1 1 and x, y, z, of course. So what do you get? You just get x. Okay, so you got plus, negative, plus, of course. So for x, you just have this thing, which is 1 minus, which is 1 with it. Then you got negative y, and then you got this minor that is just 2. Then you got z. How do you guys practice some most of whatever? So you got plus z, and then you got this minor, which is um, 2 minus 1, which is just 1. So what do you get? You just get x minus 2, y plus z. That's the thing that's not there for some reason. Wait a second. That is correctly or what? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, it's just supposed to be two over there. Of course, right? Yeah. So it's none of these, it seems. Okay. Well, that got cancelled. That got cancelled. Just one, one, one over there, of course. Um, okay. Then using that one, one, one can get rid of this stuff. You can write like two, one, zero. And then, and then what? And use that, use that to get this thing, right? Yeah, exactly. So you got x, then this minor, which is just 1, then minus y times this minor, which happens to be 2. Yes, that is right. So yeah, of course, it's none of these. D is the thing. Yes, what else could be the thing, right? Exactly. Okay, next question. Seventh. Seventh is if a is not equal to b is not equal to c, then the value of x which satisfies this equation is so you got what zero then x uh okay this is slightly weird. Okay. 
value of x which satisfies this equation you got what a b then you got minus a minus b oh this is very weird right i'm starting to think about it what if okay wait 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 uh i mean i know zero works x equal to zero is definitely going to work because it just makes it an um skew symmetric matrix and that happens to have zero determinant but otherwise uh i don't know x equal to a is this multiple choice it can't be right it's just single correct or not maybe it is multiple choice who knows let's try and everything so x equal to a does that work you got zero over there which means you don't have to yeah just a minus b a is not equal to b so you don't have to prepare that just 2a is zero then a plus b and a plus c which right it might not necessarily be the thing right of course so that's not the thing then yeah like b and c those won't also work which means okay zero is the only thing so a is correct next question so it is really just single correct right eight eight the number of distinct real roots of this thing in this interval is okay fine so sine x cosine x cosine x then you got cosine x sine x cosine x oh so it's not a diagonal you have sine x and then this cosine x got it got it um right just add all of these up and then you just get like sine x plus 2 cosine x that's gone so s plus 2 c on the right short notation he's gonna have this thing one 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 then you have cosine x sine x cosine x cosine x um cosine x sine x oops what am i writing awesome now Oh yeah, just you know what? Okay, let's do it this way. So sine plus two cosine squared, and then you got this thing. Uh, well, that cancels just one 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 because look, it just oh, it's not that actually. It's it's different because this one will have a three. Oh, you can't do that. You can't do that. Okay, but let's try something else. Uh, S plus two C. Let's see. Uh, the first one just got sine squared minus cosine squared, and for the negative. Of this guy, right? Oof. Um, right, he's gonna have c square minus sc, right? Wait, the first one was that, right? So it's, it's first square. Yes, okay, that was correct. Then it's slightly weird. Is there some better way to do this? Oh, there must be. Must be. Okay, just for, first of all, just practice this guy. Just get one cc, then you got zero, zero, then you got s minus c, s minus c over there, then just s minus c squared, right? Exactly. So this is just that s minus c squared so this is equal to zero that's what you want right okay so the number of distinct real rules of this in this interval but first of all s plus 2c can it actually be zero it can be yes but in negative 5.4 to 5.4 now well okay sine is increasing and cosine is always positive sine might be negative in magnitude till 5.4 sine will always be less than cosine which means well this thing can never be actually zero so all you is related is like yeah sine minus cosine square that should be equal to zero so sine minus cosine equal to zero sine equal to cosine which happens only at 5.4 so there's only one solution for this thing all right so c's the answer next question huh I mean, yeah like sine plus two cosine that's never zero in this interval definitely not right in the first quarter it's positive anyway in second part in the in the fourth quarter sorry um your cosine is positive it's very large it's like one or something it's sine of course, it's not going to work out. It's not going to work out. You'll have to wait till like, I don't know, whenever tan is equal to 2 or something. So tan equal to 2, that's, yeah, more than 5.4, of course. So you will have to wait till that. So it doesn't happen. Next question, ninth. Ninth is, if this is equal to that, the value of t is. Okay. Lambda square uh, plus 3 lambda. You got lambda minus 1, lambda plus 3. Okay, there's lambda everywhere. Okay, so it's a bi-quadratic, huh? So there's some nice way to do this. Well, that lambda is there everywhere. Okay. Got lambda plus three equal, right? That's uh, what if I just add all of these up? But that won't help. That won't help. Well, lambda minus three over there. That's lambda minus one. There must be some similarity. Oh, look it. So if lambda was zero, then this thing would just be what? It's just well, this would be zero. Then you got minus one plus one. Diagonal is just two. Okay. Uh, fine. You got two over there. This minor, of course. It should just be this. This. Ah, uh, this, this is getting very weird. Yes, negative three, negative 
Uh, it could have worked, except this wasn't having this two over there. But who cares? You can just split this, right? You can, of course, just split this, which would mean you just have two times this thing, which happens to be, well, not quite zero. Okay, so lambda equal to zero is not going to work. But we still can actually figure out what t is. Oh, you, you only want a value of t anyway. Oh, God. I really thought you would make me find out the whole polynomial, but no, you just want a value of t. Just put lambda equal to zero in there. You'll get the thing. So what do you get? Just get like zero, uh, negative one plus three, one. What is this thing? Two, then minus four, then minus three, and then you got four, then you got zero. So that's our determinant, of course. Um, Right, you can actually split this, you can split like this thing, you can uh, 0, 1, right, that anti-symmetric determinant plus, okay, so you just split that row, right? So you just get this thing 0, negative 1, 3, then you got 0, 2, uh, 0, right? And then you got negative 3, 4, 0. Because others, other row, well, that cancels, right? That determinant is just 0. You know the thing, let's use symmetric determinant, you know the thing, right? Okay, this thing is what? Of course, um, right, so just negative 3 and then you got, okay, it's positive, of course, like negative 3 times this positive determinant, which is just uh, negative, that's gone, just negative 6 over there. So it's 18, B is the answer. Next question. Good thing you didn't want us to find the whole polynomial. Sometimes they do. Tenth. The value of this determinant is, so, oh, okay, I know this one's like the, a triangle or a okay. Uh, so what you can do is use this 1 to get up this 2, then you got a 2 over there, and then use the 1 and 2 to get off this stuff, then that stuff, then that stuff, right? Just using row operations. And basically what you'll get is that 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5 is the determinant. Yeah, I mean just a diagonal, right? Which is what? It's 5 factorial, so B is correct. So 11th, next question, which is the cofactor? The cofactor of is uh, what element 4 in the determinant? what element four? Oh, okay the element four okay i get it is uh this thing right okay so you got positive negative positive it's negative over there so negative four times the minor four times this minor it's just one three well that five is not there just one over there then you have eight zero that one is not there you have that one okay three. other one of course and then it's got 0, 2, and 1. Awesome. So that is the thing, of course. Um, right. Now what? Let me just figure this out. So you got what? Plus 1. Okay, that's not plus. It is plus, actually. Just plus 1 times this thing, which is just 16. Then minus 1 times this thing. So just 2 minus. That's 0. So, uh, yeah. Uh, right, it's negative 2. Then you got plus 1 times this, which is just negative 24, right? Yes, yes, that's the thing. Just negative 4 times this thing, which is like what? You got 16 minus uh, 26, which is just negative 10. So that times a 4, just 40. And that's not there for some reason. Oh, you want the cofactor. You don't want... Wait, but you do want to just... Oh, you want the cofactor. You don't want that multiplied by 4. Sorry, sorry, sorry for that. It's just negative over there. Yes, but it's not multiplied by 4 itself. So... Yeah, ah, what am I doing? Seriously. Okay, just basically this thing which happens to be 10, so B is the answer. Next question. You know the thing, right? It's just a minor, but uh, but with the negative 1 power i plus g thing. Okay, 12. That's our cofactor. Yes. If delta equal to this thing and this uh, denotes the cofactors of a1, b1, c1 respectively, then the value of its determinant will be. Okay. Oh, okay, yeah, so this is the thing. Um, this is, of course, our cofactor matrix then yeah so you know that the adjoint will just be the transpose of this matrix and adjoint has this nice property that adjoint primes the matrix itself that is equal to determinant of the matrix that times the identity matrix so basically this matrix or the adjoint well that has the determinant equal to this determinant because it's a three by three matrix it's just n equal okay i'm gonna write this down actually so adjoint of any matrix of or order n right times the matrix itself, that is just the determinant of the matrix, the power of, okay, uh, that times the identity matrix. Now, taking the determinant of both sides, you get the determinant of adjoint of M times the determinant of M is equal to the determinant of M to the power of N. 
this is equal to determinant of uh, determinant of m to the power of n minus one. So n is of course the order. In this case, order is just three. So it's just a uh, determinant of m power two, right? And because it's just a transpose of this adjoint, which means yeah, just determinant of m squared, of course. So del squared, right? B is the answer. Next question, thirteen. Thirteenth is if the value of the third order determinant is eleven, then the value of the square of the determinant form, uh, formed by the cofactors will be a third order determinant uh, that has the value eleven. Okay, whatever determinant. Okay, then the value uh, of the square determinant formed by cofactors. What? Oh, okay, fine. Just adjoint. Right. Is this a determinant of this? Any uh, initial matrix so are four, of course, because the adjoint or the cofactor matrix that has determinant or uh, just equal to a determinant of m power two. So now that thing squared is determinant of m power four, which is one four six four one. Yeah, if you know your binomial theorem correctly, you get why that thing. Fourteen. Uh, this okay. Crossed with this thing, which is two mat matrix multiplication, maybe, maybe. Uh, whatever. So what do you have? Just have log base three five one two. Five one two. Let's see nine four. Uh, three power four. That is eighty one. Three power six is seven hundred eighty. That's just too big. Two two forty three. Well, just prime factor is five one two. Five one two is equal to multiple four most likely four times of one, and we got. Eleven, so you need eight. Then you got thirty-two, just eight ones. So this is like, oh, just oh, awesome. It's just two power seven. Okay, that's weird. So this is two power nine, huh? This is log base three of two power nine. Just nine log base three of two, of course. So everything is log base three, right? It's not. Okay, interesting. Fine. This is the thing. Then you got three log base three of two. Uh, Very weird. Okay, then you have two upon two. That cancels just log base three of two. Oh, log base two of three. Sorry. Okay. Then this thing is uh, one upon two. Wait, what? Okay, one upon two log base two of three. This is getting weird. Uh, yeah. That was certainly unexpected. So now what? Okay, let's just see log base. Two of three that's equal to x. Then this just becomes what? You got nine upon x, then three upon x, then one upon two times x, and then just x itself, right? Yeah. And then over here, this determinant times this determinant, which is this is honestly just very weird. Okay. Log is two of three. Why is x over there? This is a uh, two. Upon x, of course. This thing is. So you got one upon three times x, and this thing is just. All right, just two upon x as well. Wait, why are these two the same? I don't know. Just two upon x over there. Okay, cool. So that's the matrix. Interesting. So first of all, take some stuff out. Take that one upon two out. Take that x out as well, right? So yeah, you can just really take that one upon x out, take x out. This cancels because these are not zero anyway, so you can just do that, right? Then it's just this thing. So just take that one upon two out, and also like that three out, so you get three upon two. The first guy just three upon two, three one one two. That times this guy. So once again, that x and that one upon x guy that just cancels, and take that two out as well. Take a uh, one upon three out. You just get times two upon three. You just have this thing three one one one. Nice. Well, yeah. It's gonna be the thing, of course. Just two words there, two words there. So, yeah, both of these is the same thing, of course. Right. So you get this thing, and so this cancels. Let's get this guy. Okay, cool. Which is just six minus one, five, five times of this guy, which is three minus one, just two. Right. So it's just ten. These answer. This was just a calculation saga. It's not even. A real question. Fifteenth. If d equal to this thing, then d one plus d two till d five is equal to what? Are you serious? Is p p square? Okay. First of all, these guys just remain constant. That is awesome. Which means you can just uh you know sum this stuff up. Yes. 
Okay, is there some better way or something? Eight by ten? Maybe not. Maybe there's no better way. Uh, yeah, just sum this up. Who cares, right? Just sum p, sum p squared, sum uh, p power three, right? Because these rows, so uh, sorry, these columns remain the same. Then you can just add these, uh, add the first column vectors from each determinant, and then make that complete determinant, right? You can do that. So the first guy is just summation of p till five, of course, which is just five times of six upon because n times n plus one, right? So five times of six upon two, which is fifteen. Okay, we got fifteen over there. Then this is p squared, which is uh, five times of six times of two n plus one, just eleven. That upon six, well, that is fifty-five. What about this guy? P cubed is just this thing squared, so like two twenty-five. And then you got fifteen, eight. 35, 9, 25. I don't see the logic in this, but whatever. 25 and 10. Okay, and now what? Uh, <laughs> oh god. Now what? You can try subtracting. Of course, you could try subtracting. Subtract this from the. Okay, that's stupid. Because that won't actually give us anything nice. Okay, that's like negative 10 over there or something. Uh, whatever, just take some stuff out. Right, subtract this from that. Just get what? Just get 15, 15, 8. 55, 35, uh, 9. Subtract that, just get 25, 25 minus this number. Awesome. Right. <laughs> what is this, seriously? So that's just uh, 210, I guess. Then this thing is 10, and this thing is. Oh wait, you don't have to subtract it. Okay, why doesn't just subtract that actually? Who cares? And then this will just become what? One. Then twenty and forty. Okay. Very weird. Uh then now what? Okay, you can use this to do something like that. What if I take it take that two out? Let's get this thing. Fifteen, fifteen. Or oh, subtract two times of that from there. Yeah, maybe that's better than most. So what you will get is basically this thing, 15, 15, 8, 40, 21, that's 0 now. So that's just 80, that's gone, so get uh, 130, then 40, 70, 30 over there. Okay, take that 10 out, just get 30, then you get 3. And that with this 10, cool. Okay. Still not good, still not good. Not helping much. So subtract this out, you just get... 0, 20 over there. Awesome. Then, right, how is this helping? Oh, uh, wait a second. You also have to do this thing, right? Okay. Now it's just not helping. Just not helping. And most likely, cause calculation errors. First thing we should be doing is just take out some five things. So you got five from there, five from there is 25. Five squared, actually. Five squared, you got three, three, eight. 11, 7, 9, that 5 is gone, so just 45 of course, then this is just 5, this is uh, 10 even now, take that 5 out, just 5 cube, 5 cube times this thing, 3, 3, 8, 11, 7, 9, yeah, this is much more manageable, right, exactly, it's 9, 1, uh, 2, of course, so now we can start doing some stuff, okay, cool. Uh, which of this is the smallest one? I think this one, right? 371. So start subtracting from that. Let's get 5 cube, 0, 4, 8, 371. Subtract 2 times of that from there or something. No, just subtract 1. Just 1. Then you got uh, 2, then 5. Uh, not helping much. But who cares? So just this thing. Okay, cool. So take that. Yeah, take that out. Let's get 4 times of 5 cube. We got 0, 1, 2, then 3, 7, 1, then 5, 2, 1. Now just calculate this thing, right? Of course, that's just 0 over there, doesn't matter. We got negative 3 times this, which is just uh, 1 minus 4, which is negative 3 over there, of course. And then you got plus 5 times this, which is 1 minus of 14, which is negative 13. Right, which is, uh, this is just so complicated, though. Why am I even doing this? So this what is just 9. Minus 5 times of 5 and 15, just 65. This is just too much. It's too big. 
It's not 625, it's not 25, it's not 0, it can't be any of these guys. It's just 15 squared, of course, because that's what... Yeah, PQ, the sum of that guy, just 15 squared. Right, we know that. And then, this would just be 15. This would really just be 55. And this should really work out. For some reason, it's not working out, huh? I took that 5 stuff out as 5 squared, that's gone, that's 5 cube over there. Mm -hmm. Yes, this is working. This must be working. If it's not working, what do I even do then? This is the first of time, of course. You're going to get 4 out, just 4 times of 5 times this stuff. And it's still just a very, okay, it's negative first of all. That's kind of a complicated thing because if it's, yes, yeah, none of these, that's the answer. Next question. It's not of the size or sign that you want. Next question is just 16th. 16th is the value of this thing. Uh, sum 1 to n of u n if u n equal to, once again, the same kind of stuff. Well, capital N is a constant. You just have to sum this thing up, n, n squared, n cube, right? So what, what do you get? Just get this thing, n times of n plus 1 upon 2. You already get 1 upon 2 out, or we'll just manage that later. Okay, plus 1 upon 2. Then you got this thing, uh, n, n plus 1, 2, n plus 1, upon 6. Then what else do you have? Just n cube. So just n squared, n plus 1 squared, upon upon what upon uh four of course and oh i think i know it's okay just take that n times n plus one upon two out what do you get you just get this thing we'll just get one two n plus one upon three then you will get n times n plus one upon two awesome and then you have this stuff one two n plus one and five two n plus one okay fine and then over here, just have 3n squared and 3n. Okay, and why is that the thing? I don't know. Fine. So now what? Just take some more stuff out. The so 2n plus 1 is out. It's got n, n plus 1, 2n plus 1. Another n is of just n squared. Right. Just get 1, 1, 5, 1 upon 3, 1, 1. And then 1 upon 2 times n plus 1. Right, and plus 1 upon 2, then you got just 3n, yeah, and then you got 3, right? That's the thing, of course. Uh, now what? This is still not being good. Take that 2 out, first of all, you get n times, okay, n squared, and also that 1 upon 3 out, so you get n squared, n plus 1, times 2n plus 1. Yeah, yeah, it's 6 over there. Put that inside, just get 1, 3, 3, then n plus 1, 6n and 6 okay we got 115 awesome okay okay now what you could take that 6 out and then subtract and whatnot is that a nice thing to be doing i don't think so send over there let's see. if i just add that oh uh, okay i see what's happening so if i just add this column to that column what you get like 6 times of n plus 1 you got 6 over there you got six. right is it it's just this thing, but that ends of 6, of course. That means it's just 0. Yeah, so A is the answer. Next question. Huh, weird. Hey, so maybe just, maybe, what is this thing? Uh, 2n plus 1, you got little n, right? In this case, n was just 5. So, uh, yeah, that doesn't match at all. <laughs> or does it? Wait, 2n plus 1, then be 11. This is not 11. It's not even, yeah, it's not. It's not that for sure. We got 1, 11, and then 3 squared. No, it doesn't match. This is definitely none of these, right? Okay, next question. 17th. Seventeen is delta 1 equal to this thing, delta equal to this thing. Are they two determinants then? What do you want? A uh, relation between them, of course. So, you want x, x, and you want b, b, and a, and stuff. I think I've done that once, right? The super symmetric stuff or something like that. I don't know, I don't know. I'm just not doing that properly. So the first diagonal is just x cube. Then the next diagonal is just b, b, and then a, so just plus b squared a. 
then the next diagonal is p a squared and minus of this first diagonal is a b x that times of this diagonal is a b times a b well no that's not right oh it's just a b x once again sorry minus a b x and then this stuff which is also just in minus a b x so what do you get you just get this thing x cube plus b squared that was the thing right that was stupid the thing yes yes that must be the thing Alright, whatever, just x cubed plus minus 3 ab x, so that's weird. ab x plus x ab. Yeah, that is the thing. Okay, for some reason that's the Yeah, whatever. So it's just what? x cubed plus b squared a plus b a squared. No, something's wrong about this. There must be something that's wrong. Looks like a If this was like slightly different, this would actually make sense. But whatever, whatever. This is the thing. This x cubed plus well, b squared a plus a b squared and minus 3 a b x. That's what del 1 is. Then del 2 is just x minus a b. What do you want? Del 1 equal to 3 times of del 2 squared? No. No, it's not. It's definitely not that, right? It's just... No. No, no, no. It's just wrong. So it's a cubic. It's a quadratic. So like that's where it is... 4 degree doesn't make sense. So, second degree, second degree might be correct. Second degree, four degree, are you serious? No. Second degree, this, out of 3 upon 2, huh? I understand how that happens. No, so this must be wrong. It's probably the second one that's correct. So, the derivative of this guy, x of course, is 3x squared minus 3ab. Is that equal to 3 times of delta 2? Well, yes. So, B is correct. Next question. 18th. If Y equal to this thing, the value of this term is equal to where del, sorry, where Y is equal to this thing. The nth derivative of Y. Okay. It's a sine of MX, huh? Interesting. So, you got Y and Y1. Okay. Okay. That's weird. Uh, so Think about it. So each of these is gonna have the m factor, right? Yeah. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. So first we got sine, then cosine, but that then m m cosine. Then once in there, just m squared, but now negative. So just negative m squared sine, and just keep on going. Oh, it's gonna be problematic. Definitely just problematic. Rid of this guy, just what? Negative m cubed cosine. I don't like how it's feeling. Okay, another derivative just m power 4 uh, sine, of course. This, yeah. this one is what is just. Why is this happening? I don't get it. I don't know. This m power 5 cosine. Okay, so after the 4 derivative. Whatever. And then the definition once it's m power 6. Negative m power 6 sine, by the way. Okay, then another derivative just negative m power 6 cosine, and then another one which is just. Uh, I'm seeing some similarities, of course. Look at this one, it's m cosine, it's m cosine, it's sine, it's sine. Yeah, and this one will be what? Just m power 7 sine. Oh, of course, this these two uh, vectors are the same. These two are vectors are the same. This is just 0, of course. So, yeah, it's possibly just 0 because, right, just taking that negative m power. Uh, wait, it should be 7 and that should be 8, right? It's 4, 5, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8 over there. So you just take that m power 6 out, you just get what? Negative m power 6 out. Actually, so sine, uh, m cosine, and then negative m squared sine. So yeah, it is 0. This is just 0. It's none of these. Because if m is not 0, then yeah, it's just none of these. Okay, so these are the answer. Next question. Nineteenth, if del okay is equal to this is a function of x, then integration of square root of pi upon two of del. First of all, just figure out what this value should be. So you got one one plus sine, then sine over there got cosine cosine sine. Oh, this is just weird, of course. Uh, some kind of easy stuff. Okay, just try to add something up. What do you get? Minus two and that cancel, just two. That that doesn't help. Okay, that doesn't help. 
Oof. Uh, you got one, one, one over there. That's not over there. It's just missing. You could subtract. You could subtract that. Because I'm going to sign it somewhere there. Just need to sign it. Doesn't look very doable though. Or subtract this from there or something. Oh, hey, guess what? If I sub. Right. If I add that to this thing, you get like 1 plus sign x. That's not what's supposed to be happening. Right, everything works out except for some stuff. Just just a little bit, right? Exactly. So this thing is uh, row 1 minus row 2, right? But with this extra 1 thrown in, right? So just separate it. Just separate like 1, 0, 0 and then this vector. But that's gonna be zero anyway. The other limit, which is row one minus row two, uh, sorry, column one minus column two in, uh, in the third column, and the other one where we split it just one zero zero. So, but yeah, just this determinant, which is just one cosine cosine, and okay, got it. Which is just like cosine is just out. You get what just c one one one. We got one plus sine x. Awesome. Which is just what c times of one minus of this guy just minus minus cosine. Oh, sorry, minus sine. It's just negative sine. Like negative s c is what this uh del is. Okay, cool. Negative, right? It's positive, negative, positive, negative, positive. Of course, it's positive. Right. So, yeah, it's just one. Okay, okay, got it. It's just C times of negative S. Then this integration, uh, del x dx, fine. Just negative integration 0 to pi upon 2 of sin x cosine x dx, which is, you get the thing is 2, negative 1 upon 2, whatever. Uh, just negative 1 upon 4 integration 0 to pi of sin x dx. I'm just trying to replace. Um, x pi to okay, replace two x by x that would make more sense anyway. But that's the thing. So, what do you get? This is negative one upon well, this integration zero to pi, right? It's symmetry, symmetry says that this will just be equal to two, right? This integration, so just got negative one upon two as a value. So, d is correct. Next question 20. I know I'm slow right now, I have not done anything for almost a week now, so. Yes, I'm very slow. I know that, right? It's a system of this linear equation. Okay, this has a non-zero solution and A, B, C, R. This has a non-zero solution. Oh, oh, fine, got it. So this is like this thing. One, one, one. This is two A. This thing is three B. That's just four C. <coughs> A d and then you got c over there well this determinant must be zero because uh when you use this thing as a matrix it's just got you know this matrix right on x y z that gives you that gives zero right exactly so this has um uh, two solutions uh so zero comma zero zero comma zero that's one solution right and right and there's another solution which basically means that you have you are actually uh you know mapping two points which are distinct onto a single point, which is our zero vector, right? And yeah, that just means that, of course, it should be zero vector, but whatever. So that just means this guy is not, is not, um, right? Yeah, it's span is not the complete thing. So it's, yeah, it's just determined equal to zero, right? That makes sense. So what do you get? This guy's going to zero. Could we actually do something nice? Let's try it out. What would be just one, one, one have a a then okay you know what actually two times of that so you get zero a b c then you have just b then you have two c awesome now what uh, you could just plug that out right so this must be equal to zero right that's what you're saying okay you know what is the one upon one upon small is equal to capital A, so you get this thing. Capital A, capital B, capital C. If A, B, are, A, B, C are not zero, then of course it makes sense. Otherwise, we don't know what's going to happen. All right. Assuming A, B, C are not zero, of course. So you got zero, you got one over there, you got one, one, two, and one. Awesome. So now subtract some stuff or something. Nah, don't subtract yet. Okay, wait a second. Yeah, just do it. Just do it. We don't have any other choice, right? Okay, so what do you get? Just get a times this thing is 1 minus 2, just negative 1 over there. Then you got uh, minus b, minus b times this minor, which is just a uh, 
negative 2. Yeah, yeah, yeah that makes sense. Then you got plus c times this minor, which is just uh, negative 1. You got to 0, so what do you get? Just get 2b equal to a plus c, right? Which means a, b, c are in a, p, but then it's like 1 upon a, 1 upon b, 1 upon c are in a, p, so a, b, c are in h, p, which is uh, c. Next question. 21. Okay, you know what? We should, we should stop here because 20 questions each video. That's a good effort for me at least. Right. So we'll stop here. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.